Good afternoon, Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Sunday, August 5th, 2012. Taking a look at our two systems in the Atlantic. This is our brand new Java-based hurricane tracking map, and uh, this is going to be actually imported into the app. We're going to have a tracking map tab, so this is going to be available in your app in the next update here before the end of the month, so look forward to that. There will also be the Western Atlantic version of it where it crops just this area for you. And we're also going to add some tropical cyclone heat potential tracking maps where you see these various plots over TCHP maps. I'll explain all of that later. Bottom line, we're going to be adding some really nice custom-made maps to the app. Well, as you can see, we have Ernesto out here, and it has really fallen apart the track into Central America now and then across the southern Bay of Campeche no longer is it considered any threat at all to the United States Gulf Coast and I think that folks up here in the Northeast Yucatan you can also breathe a lot easier if you have plans to go to Cancun or Cozumel this week do not cancel them enjoy the time over there it might be a little rainy a little breezy but nothing compared to what look like could have been a hurricane threat it seems that the global models the big dynamic global models have beaten out the regional hurricane models the statistical models um, I guess that it is just time to perhaps put more emphasis on the obvious instead of what might happen and looking at some of the parameters for Ernesto you can clearly see that it is not nearly as well organized still has a little bit of a curve shape to it but it really fell apart the hurricane center noting that there is dry low to mid-level air in this region and that is really not a surprise we've been tracking that ourselves using this graph uh, for you know ever since last year when vertical instability became an issue I'll zoom in on it and you can see it the climatological increase in vertical instability should go like that and the graph here is showing that we are well below where we should be climatologically for this time of year vertical instability simply put is the ability of the atmosphere to lift and it's kinda like it's got a cap on it a dry stable atmosphere does not have a lot of instability with it in fact it's completely the opposite if it's dry and stable then there is no instability and you can see here on the graph that vertical instability has been running well below normal or the average here for pretty much the entire hurricane season we've never seen it even approach the climatological norm so it's no surprise that Ernesto has not been able to do much I guess it's no surprise to the global models because they have not been showing it do much uh, this is the GFS, the Global Forecast System. This is valid about right now. Here's Ernesto down in the Caribbean. A weak, la weak little area of low pressure showing up as about 1,008 millibars or so in the model. You don't see much curvature to it. You don't see much convection, which is denoted by the blues and greens, which is actually the previous six hours precipitation. But if you were looking at a well-developed hurricane or a storm, you see all of this kind of wrapped around in a very solid fashion. You've seen it before, I'm sure. You know what it looks like. And this does not look like a healthy system. Moving out in time, here it is tomorrow morning. GFS indicating, you know, perhaps an increase, a little bit in organization with the low pressure there. Not very deep. Again, about 1,008, 1,009 millibars. 48 hours out, skirting the north coast of Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua here. Um, heavy rainfall, obviously a problem if it works its way on shore in that region. We know that all too well, and uh, hopefully this will continue to move briskly on shore and get it over with. Landfall, according to the GFS, would be somewhere in Belize. Not as a hurricane. It doesn't show it very strong at all, uh, so more just a rain and breezy uh, type of event. But the rainfall cannot be... Um, underemphasized here we need to make sure that you understand that the rainfall can be an issue heavy tropical rainfall a big deal especially across mountainous regions 
then the GFS basically keeps it buried here over Central America, the southern part of the Yucatan Peninsula, never having a chance to come over the Bay of Campeche, uh, the wider side of it, or the southern Gulf, and that should pretty much do it. By day five, it drifts north just a little bit sitting here in the Bay of Campeche, but not a problem in terms of a hurricane. This is probably never going to make it to hurricane strength. At least the GFS doesn't see it doing so. And this little area right out here is what would be the leftovers of what is now Florence. And we'll watch and see if that gets trapped out here and if it's able to survive. Uh, the Atlantic just not real favorable right now. Um, basically, when you look at the early part of August, even though we've had these two quick developments with Florence and um, Ernesto before, usually it's the mid part of August, August 15th through the 20th, that the lid climatologically seems to come off and that vertical instability across the entire Atlantic changes. We're still, you know, a couple of weeks away from that, almost, 10 days or so, and uh, that makes a difference, so we'll see what happens. I am noticing that the MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, looking more favorable for the Atlantic Basin as we move through time, and I will examine that on Monday's update. For now, no worries with Ernesto in the United States, and even folks along the Yucatan, more of a rain event than anything else. The impacts from storm surge and wind should be minimal, but the rain, of course, you can never take that for granted and always be aware of flooding potential from too much heavy rain over a short period of time. The rest of the tropics, including the eastern Pacific, looking just fine with no areas of concern today. Again, I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you very much for watching. I'll have another one of these video blogs for you tomorrow where we will go over the week ahead, looking at the MJO and current sea surface temperature anomalies across the eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. Until tomorrow, have a great rest of your Sunday, and we'll speak again soon.